welcome back. My name is Corinne Phillips and this is Fresh Pea Cooks. Today I want to share with you um, the Environmental Working Group. I've referenced it a few times in other videos, but I want to show you how to use this database. It is an invaluable resource. It's all consumer driven. There's no big lobbies. There's no corporate backing. This is strictly a database that catalogs all health and wellness products, beauty care products, home and some industrial cleaning products, and it ranks them by toxicity. So there's categories such as carcinogens, endocrine disruptors, allergens, reproductive and neurotoxins. And so what this resource allows you to do is you can go through your cabinets, through your cleaning supplies, your cosmetics, your bath care products, pretty much anything in your house that you use on a regular basis. And you can check and see what these products, what these ingredients are, how toxic they are, and it just empowers you to make better buying choices. So as a consumer, I want to know when I look at my shampoo and I see 40 ingredients on it, what are they? Are they necessary? Are they toxic? Is this something that maybe I shouldn't be using when I'm in the shower and I'm sudsing up and my pores are all open, my scalp is really porous, and then I'm putting something that's going to be toxic on my head every day? Um, yeah, I don't want to do that. So for me, the information has been invaluable and it's completely changed the brands that I use and how I shop. So for starters, let's go into the bathroom. I'll take you in there and we'll look in my cabinets, in my shower. Um, I've gone through almost all of my products, but I'm sure there's something in there that I haven't yet checked. So let's go see. Let's start here. Okay, so this is hair care products. Now I'll show you, interestingly enough, some of these products are not in the database and I'll explain why later. I've checked all of those. What do I have? I have makeup in here. Oh, here's something I haven't checked. Duo, surgical adhesive, eyelash glue, because every girl needs a pair of fake eyelashes every once in a while. Okay, so we'll take this with us. We'll check this out. Um, this is a friend of mine, Dr. Rajani. He makes skincare and his, um, his lotion is great. I love it, but it's too small. They haven't, it's not on the database. And this is another kind of skin lotion that my sister-in-law sent me and also too small. So neither one of these are on there, but I'll show you how you can take um, something you love and check it by um, based on the ingredients. So we'll take that with us. What's this? Hydrating serum, uh, big sexy hair. This stuff is gnarly. I'll show you kind of how toxic some of these um, hairsprays are. Okay, now let's look in the shower. Now for years I used Aveda's Damage Remedy because I thought it was natural. And I started looking up some of the ingredients online and I decided to change my hair care products, especially my shampoo and my conditioner. Eventually, EWG led me to Carina Organics. Now, this is a company out of Vancouver, BC, and they make really natural um, hair care products. Now, interestingly enough, the shampoo and conditioner from Carina Organics is so much nicer. My hair is shinier, it's softer, it's smoother, it looks more conditioned, less frizzy. So that was a really nice surprise because a lot of these organic products, you just don't know. You can't just go on a label because something says organic. It's becoming kind of a meaningless term. Um, so do your research and try out several different products if at first you do not find one that you love. Okay, now let's go research. Never thought I'd be bringing you guys into my shower. Okay, so we're gonna look up our Duo Surgical Adhesive, AKA Eyelash Glue. Big Sexy Hair Spritz and Stay. I bought this at a drugstore um, when I was going to a costume party, so I've never really been a hairspray user, um, 
which is why in a little teeny bottle, but I'm sure it's probably pretty gnarly. And Dr. Rajani's Advanced Firming Complex. Now, Dr. Rajani is a friend of mine and a fellow YouTuber. You guys should go out and check, check his channel out if you um, don't have a queasy stomach. Anyway, it's a small local company and he makes beautiful products, um, but he's so small that he's not in the database. So we can go, we have ingredients here and we can start searching by ingredients and see um, the nature of this lotion. So for starters, we'll go to ewg.org and here it is. This is the home page, and so you'll get to see all of the various things that you can do with this website. So here we have consumer products. This is what I use the most when I'm checking products in my house. But I also use this database for information to find out things like the latest bills to pass Congress related to things that affect or impact our environment or our health. From the home page, you can look at the various um, portals that you can explore. So this is the guide to cosmetics, and I use this one frequently. You can look for products that have received the EWG verified label. You can come down and look at food scores. Um, if you have children, there's some really interesting information about children and their well-being. Um, shopper's guides to pesticides and produce. Healthy cleaning, I use this one often. Farming in the environment. Dirty dozen, which food additives that you should avoid. Um, the farm subsidy database. There's a lot of really interesting information and articles in the AgMag Enviro blog. It just goes on and on. So to simplify, we'll just go up here to the Skin Deep Guide to Cosmetics. Now there's a couple different ways you can use this website. Now here is the search where I can actually put in the name of the item. So let's start with the Duo Surgical Adhesive. And I always start broad and go narrower because sometimes if you put in a too descriptive of a title, you won't actually find your product. So if I wanna check a certain product, I'm gonna go over here to products and I'm gonna see four products. Eyelash glue, here we go, it's a clear adhesive. Now this eyelash glue is a two. Overall, that's a really good score, one being the best. Um, but you can't just go on number because certain things have an allergen, a high allergen rating, like for instance, cinnamon oil has an allergen rating of four. It has a high potential to be an allergen for some people. So it's really important to look at this graph right here and so that you can discern which of these potential ratings are the worst for you, which ones you want to avoid completely, and which ones you're okay, you're able to live with. So here, the eyelash glue, we have overall hazard is low, carcinogens in the product are low, development and reproductive toxicity is low, there's nothing in it that's gonna cause allergy or immunotoxicity, um, use restrictions, low, getting over toward moderate. But more interestingly is this part. So the ingredients concerns, when you go through, a lot of these are gonna, if you're not a chemist, a lot of these are gonna be um, unpronounceable and unfamiliar terms. But over time, when you start checking multiple products, you start to see patterns that certain shampoos use certain ingredients quite often and these certain ingredients can often be very toxic. So when you're at the store and you're glancing at the ingredient list, you're better able to discern which ingredients you wanna stay away from. So overall, I'm not too worried about my once or twice a year big party that I go to and I glue on fake eyelashes. So that's, that's refreshing. Okay, let's check, let's check big sexy hair. Okay, big sexy hair, what's it called? Spritz and Stay. Volumizing hairspray, thickening hairspray, volumizing, volumizing, volumizing. Spritz and Stay, here we go. So here's the product. 
overall hazard is moderate. Uh, not too worried about the carcinogens. Reproductive toxicity is a little higher. It's primarily an allergen is the biggest problem with this particular product. So now we can discern that the largest threat is the allergy component. So if we go down the list, we look at this, I'm going to just wing this pronunciation, octanoxate. Now this in enhanced skin absorption biochemical or cellular level changes, development, reproductive toxicity, endocrine disruption, immunotoxicity, organ system toxicity. So this is kind of a bad ingredient and I won't be buying big sexy hair again. So that's how you use this database, and it's really, really interesting. Now you can look at ingredient concerns. You can look at animal testing. Do they test on animals? Um, where to purchase, label information. Now, not all products are on this database. So for instance, as we went into the shower, we'll look at Aveda. Now there's three old products. You can see that the, these are grayed out. That means the products are old. Interestingly enough, EWG has become so powerful and so influential that a lot of companies are changing their formulas. They don't want to they don't want to show up with a 9 or 10 rating on their hairspray. And so there's tons and tons and tons of old products that rate significantly worse than the newer products. So if you check something once and you really love it and you miss it, go back and check again. You can also write to the company and tell them specifically, I'm concerned about retinol palmate or I'm concerned about parabens. And so you can have a specific argument and consumer voice a lot of times creates change. So don't give up on your products, but being informed also gives you an edge for advocacy if you want um, to write in and make your voice heard. Now, Aveda has a huge product line. They fill entire, their Aveda salons that have um, hundreds of items. So why aren't they listed in here? Now, the way EWG works is they go through and they mine data from websites. So if a company that you love, they do not list their ingredients on their website, they'll likely not be in this database. Okay, now that we know how to look up products by their name, what if a product isn't listed? What if the company is so small that they haven't made the database yet? Such as the case for our Rajani MD Advanced Firming Complex. So here's what we'll do. The first ingredient is water. The second ingredient is Chinesis seed oil, which I'm probably not too concerned about, Sorbitol is a sweetener, um, butylene glycol. So let's look this up. We're back at the skincare database. And instead of searching for our product, we'll just search for our, for our ingredient. Butylene glycol. Okay, so butylene glycol is a one rating. It's a benign, non-concerning ingredient. So let's go down the list to acetyl alcohol. Also a one, another benign ingredient, PEG 100 sterate. So here under the actual ingredient, you'll see um, organ system toxicity, non-reproductive, these are the studies, these are the references that were used in the, in the designing of this overall database. And so you can look up on your own um, the study by Harville, J. Harville, and you can find these actual studies and read up on this information. Ethylene oxide is one of the ingredients and it's a pretty gnarly um, chemical. They're isn't very much of it in here um, because the overall score rating is three. You do kind of get yourself going down a rabbit hole going um, after some of these ingredients, but a lot of people are really sensitive or allergic to some of these chemicals. And if you know which ones, this is an invaluable resource. Okay, so this one is a three, not 
terribly concerning. Sterile alcohol, sesame seed oil, prunus oil, alpha lipoic acid is a one, a non-issue. Nicinamide, a non-issue, another one. Nice job, Dr. Rajani. So once you go through your cabinets, you're probably gonna have a big list of products that you don't wanna buy again. But here's the good thing. The website also ranks products by best to worst. So you can go into the database, and we're here again in the cosmetic database, and you can go up here for all of your major products. So this is how I found the Karina Organics shampoo. So you go to hair and shampoo. And this lists the best shampoos up to the worst. And here are all the search results. There's 298 pages of shampoo. So here is the list of ingredients, the most concerning being glycerin, which is not um, a product to be worried about. The rest of them are all extracts. So I found my favorite shampoo and conditioner to date um, from using this tool. And so if you wanna go through and you have nail polish, say, that you love, and it's highly toxic, you can go through and choose the various brands that don't use really harsh chemicals. And you can make wiser buying decisions. I hope this empowers you and allows you to make the best choices that you can. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. A 17 minute video, man, and that was cutting out a lot of the good stuff. I really could go on and on about this really valuable resource that we all have. Not only is it consumer funded, it's continually updated as new scientific discoveries are made. So a lot of these scores are subject to change based on the new information that's coming out of science. And for those of you interested in checking out Dr. Rajani's YouTube page, I'll include the link here. If you head on over, tell them hi. And as always, many of the items shown in this video are available over at shopfreshp.com. On the left-hand side of that page, you'll see a category list. Personal care products is where you find all of my lotions, potions, shampoo, and the like. And for those of you new to the channel, welcome. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to subscribe. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next video.